Um, some of the other problems have uh, gotten to the point where uh, I'm real surprised that the military ain't blowed a gasket over, NDAA being one of them. Now, yeah, maybe they are was blowing a gasket. Ordinary joy and partying and free beer when a certain state said, no, you don't do that. And I would recommend on it from this show that all the states get together and say, no, you don't do that. It's just, it comes under that uh, Article 10, you know, that separation of church and state. Yeah. Well, it's real simple, you know. There are certain things you shall not do according to the Constitution, and there's a whole bunch of things that they're doing anyway. Now, executive orders, that's another fear uh, whore that's running around out there. Executive orders are all fine, well, and good. Except that executive orders, when not in a time of declared war, have to be approved by the House and Senate. Yeah, that's right. Anything the president that's not doesn't have that House power. Under, under executive order, oops, not applicable. But Think Obama's about it. going to say this is a time of war. Well, you're going to have to have well, one declared. Well, you can say what you want all day long and jump up and down like the strutting little peacock that he is, but that doesn't make it real. Exactly. Congress has not right. declared this country to be at war. In four. Everybody get that? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. got it. of emergency does not, and I'm going to say this, does not qualify as any state of emergency other than war itself. So and only the need to Congress has that. that power. Exactly. Like I, uh, separation of church and state is beginning to look more like separation of uh, P- us and them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess what? Our particular Congress today, they definitely do not have the intestinal fortitude to declare a war. They even abdicated on giving themselves a raise. They're scared okay. of their own shadows, and they should be right about now. Yeah, well, if everybody's been watching what's happening in Europe, I would suggest that uh, everybody also uh, pay attention to what's going on closer to closer to home. Mm-hmm. There are some things that are going on that uh, people need to uh, look to the financial news, and I don't necessarily well, mean the stuff on mainstream. Well, not uh, only that, Drake, but that's that's just a rule of thumb these days: is anything you see on mainstream news, especially if it's repeated more than once is exactly what you should not be paying attention to. Always look well, at that. that, too, uh, but, that uh, what I'm talking too. about is that there are things happening in the financial world. Okay? Uh, we just had a uh, G8 summit or whatever it was, uh, NATO summit. And yeah. uh, they supposedly decided a whole bunch of things for the world. And there's some problems with that. As uh, if they had the right to. Well, that too, but... Uh, there's some countries that are strenuously objecting to some some of the uh, BS in that particular meeting to include some of the members of the meeting itself. And then there was a couple of fees that didn't go over too well. So, you know, the fun is just beginning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I can't wait. I want to give every, all politics to have to take truth serum, a big dose of it. Well, we could eliminate a lot of them just by requiring a, a, a written test on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. No. And if, oh, yeah. and, if they do, and if they don't score at least an 80 on that, they're out. No. No. I would say they'd have to qualify at least a 90. Well, you just, know, you know what I'm saying. A test like do, that would, it, would eliminate most of them. Let's do something well, easier. You can hit a few more with a drug test. No. <laughs> that would eliminate all of them. It's easier than that. It's called <clears throat> financial report. Oh, there you go. <laughs> An audit. Let's audit them all. Oops. Yes, there you go. No, it's a self-audit. They're required by law to declare everything. Oops. Now, how does a man on that particular amount of money become a multimillionaire that quick? Well, then they just pull a Charlie Rango and get away with it. No. 
Violation of the, of the uh, public trust at that level becomes a federal felony. Well, gee, then, why isn't Romney in jail? Good, well, he's, uh, he's slated to go, from what I heard. <laughs> he's got a bunch of multi-millions of dollars that he stole from people, specifically pension funds and, uh, and uh, things of those companies that he uh, raped. Oh, well, I know. Has it confirmed that, that Obama is definitely not eligible for the presidency? Absolutely. I can send you the documentation anytime you want it. <laughs> Right. Uh, that's my that's my point. Well, I would think that that poses a big legal problem for the military right there. No, it's easy. Yeah, because they don't have a lawful commander in chief. Right. Exactly. Well, the commander in chief is a fraud. Correct. He's an imbecile. Exactly. I wonder how many. I wonder how many of the senators and representatives knew it, but went along with that. Most of them. Well, isn't that conspiracy to commit fraud? Oh, it goes deeper it, than that. That is accessory. Or <laughs> accessory, <laughs> however you want to put it. I'm not too good on the legal lingo, but, man, I'm looking at that as being two pretty big legalities right there. I would say the only ones in on Capitol Hill who may not have known are the newbie constitutional representatives elected in 2010. True. When you go into office, you get a minimum of a two-day briefing on all of it. Generally, it lasts four days if you take notes. So they are informed exactly how to, what to steal, what they're allowed to, who's legal and who isn't. Yeah, I know, that's a mind buster right there, but that's the fact of it. Right, and they're told what will happen if they don't go along with the status quo, too. Exactly. Hey, uh, Cindy, you still with us? I sure am. What Good. has been going on with you? Sorry to interrupt you guys, but I haven't heard anything from Cindy. She's been really quiet tonight. Doc's been awful oh, quiet, too. Listen. Well, I, I know a while ago when they were talking about the rooster, I, I, I just was really thinking that it needed to meet, meet your uh, coffee drink and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the one that sits next to me on the porch and uh, you don't drink your coffee, coffee and yes. kept sitting there because he'll drink it or she'll drink it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that one. Or she'll climb up on my lap and lay her head across my arm and take a nap. <laughs> you want to see yeah, some she's fun? The one that, oh, she's the one that I hatched. I was the first that she saw. So, of course, I'm mama chicken to her. And, oh, my. She doesn't, she, she, that's not something I'm easy to forget. You want to have some fun? Put some uh, whiskey in the, in the chicken's drinking water. <laughs> now, Drake, why uh -oh. do you, egg, you get thin? Why do you want a bunch that. of inebriated poultry? Because you get pickled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What you get? I know everybody jokes about all my animals. They tell me I live in Animal Kingdom on crack. Every <laughs> one of them is really weird. Uh, they they each all have their own personalities. I'm, come on. A billy goat who sleeps on my front porch, he thinks he's my guard goat. <laughs> But, but well, in Pudiatra, when you have a thunderstorm and you have piglets, you bring them in the house. Why wouldn't they act like they were on crack? <laughs> <laughs> well, they well, 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 you want to close back porch? <laughs> well, no, I can't say that either. Right after I got the pigs and the baby chicks, and the baby goes, yeah, we had a very nasty cold front that came through, and everybody had a cage and was in my house. Uh -huh. <laughs> she left well, the baby. Well, before last of all. The house stopped smelling like a barnyard. Oh, heck, that's no big deal. Um, before last fall, uh, we had a bunch of wild pigs. I'd actually taken a lot of time, and I'd sat down with a bucket, and I'd feed every night. And finally, these pigs started getting used to me sitting on that bucket. Now, we've got the wild Russian ho hogs out here. 
And, uh, you Uh-oh, know, everybody was talking Russian about how, how these, these, these hogs were so elusive and stuff. And But anyway, I got them all tamed down. And the little ones would come over, being curious. I'd start scratching them around. And this went on for about three or four years. Or, well, no longer than that, about five or six years. And, uh... Well, up till last fall, I had 27 wild Russian pigs that would actually sleep in the front of my house and along the driveway, along the sides of the house. Now, that's quite a few pigs. They'd gather up in like three or four in a little ball, you know, and on the cold nights and stuff. Uh, and I'll tell you what, we talk about something frightening to people when they would come by and visit. They would get out of their vehicle, and here come these wild hogs coming out of nowhere sometimes around the house and stuff, and just come out, to, you know, get some attention from them, but they didn't understand that with the myth that uh, run around about wild hogs. Well, let's not say they're exactly myths. Uh, there's been a few times where the sows went in heat and some of these wild boars had come down over the hill. Uh, well, if it wasn't for me being able to move quick, I might have got a little bit of a... Uh, uh, some unnecessary roughness played on me, but uh, that used to be a sight. I mean, yeah, and that was a big thing, too. I mean, we used to really enjoy having them pigs around here, but unfortunately, last fall, some hunters got greedy and decided that they would shoot all of our pigs. Oh, oh no. Oh. And, that, uh, you need to push them up. Yeah, and I only raised one piglet. There was a mama pig out here that uh, she had one little pig, and she wouldn't feed it. And this, I mean, it still had its belly button, its little cord, you know, and they're tiny and they're cute. Now, anybody's seen little pigs, and they're adorable. Oh, yeah. And that mama would not feed that baby. She was dissing it. She was going to starve it off. So, needless to say, we put mama in the freezer, and I took baby in the house. <laughs> we raised that pig, and she actually was a blast. We had a blast with that pig. She was a good pig, too. Let me tell you something. If parents were here with their children, I used to warn them, don't spank your, your kids in front of the hog. <laughs> that hog, she's going to, she, that mother lens thing going to take over in her, and she's going, she going to let you know about spanking your kids. <laughs> So it was really neat on how that how hogs can pick up even the human children, and will start to guard them too. Mhm. Mm well, I had I had a red lord Amazon that lived on an open perch. The bird went when I'd swat one of the kids, and that bird would fly down to attack me. It was like, mm mm, no more bird. Bye. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Well, I like my little piggies. They keep all them old snakes away. Actually, I like I'll the snakes, to... too. Yeah, I like yep. snakes, too. Yeah, uh, I, we have a rule on the ranch. Um, uh, we tell our hunters, look, now, we don't want to see you going off on some more of that fear porn about snakes, whatever I call it, fear porn, because uh, even a rattlesnake, they're not going to go out of their way to get you. Uh, they'll do their best to avoid you. But some people see them, they freak out right away, and they kill them. Well, there's a disease that rabbit, rabbits carry out here in Texas. And if it gets into a deer herd, it'll wipe the whole deer herd out. So what keeps the rabbits in check? The rattlers. That's snakes. Right, snakes in general. Well, we've got another snake out here that keeps the rattlers in check, and it's called an indigo. And that's what an indigo does. He runs around looking for rattlesnakes to eat. And mm -hmm. we try to educate our hunters when they come out here on, okay, wait a minute, you know, there's there's a natural layout to the environment here. And we right. want you to respect that cycle. Don't kill the snakes. Right. 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 My grandchildren were having a fit the other day because yeah. I was picking up bees out of the pool, letting them dry their wings off on my hands and fly right. away. And the grandchildren were like, Grandma, you're going to get stung. Kill the bee. I said, oh, no, we do not kill bees. Why? Because if the bees die, so do we. What do you mean? 
Also 